So you've just woken up after another painstakingly gruesome day of your life. It's now been three months since your girlfriend broke up with you and you start your typical daily routine. Wake up at 2.30 p.m., have some toast with butter, and watch five hours of YouTube videos in your pajamas while ignoring the fact that you should probably be looking for a job instead of continuing to work at your part-time restaurant gig. Your YouTube recommended feed is filled with the usual Smash Bros and old school RuneScape content, and you're blasting through each video with the occasional piss every hour or so. But today is a little tougher than most days have been this past month. This month, you're really starting to miss your relationship. You start contemplating your mistakes, wishing you could go back and change them, and you're a little more tempted than usual to send out that fifth I miss you text to your ex without her reply. But instead of that hopeless endeavor, you decide to look up possible ways to get her back. Most of the advice revolves around something called the no contact rule, where you don't contact your ex for at least 30 days, then send a text and see if it's possible to mend things. This provides a little bit of relief. Maybe it really is possible that you'll get her back. After a few of those videos, your YouTube recommended feed has transformed into something dramatically different. You now find yourself in the red pill bubble. Videos on why you should never get back with your ex, female nature, pickup artists, and masculine frame flood your pupils and you eat them up until your eyes start to strain. You just can't stop watching these red pill videos. Perhaps this is how your journey into the red pill manosphere started, or perhaps just because it's so damn popular on YouTube, you decide to click on one video and YouTube just spit out a million more onto your recommended. Either way, the red pill philosophy or ideology, whatever you want to call it, is growing in numbers and at an extremely rapid pace. But for those not familiar, let me provide as accurate of a definition as I can because the idea, the word red pill has taken on so many forms in the past couple years. When you hear the term red pill, you might immediately think of the movie The Matrix when Neo is presented with the option between a red pill and blue pill. This is actually where the term derives from and it parallels the outcome of taking the red pill in the movie. The red pill is a dating philosophy, or rather at this point, a way of living for men that offers them what is regarded to be the truth behind female nature, dating, and being a masculine man. It's basically a set of principles for one to abide by to better navigate their relationships with women and themselves. The story at the start of this video is not exactly how it was brought into this realm of living, but it's pretty similar. Since then, I've refined my opinions about the red pill, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and why I think these videos are so addicting. And that is what I want to share with you in this video today. So before you tell me I'm a blue pill beta simp in the comments, maybe, just maybe, watch the video until the end. To better understand what drives the content in this bubble, we first must evaluate the main demographic or target audience. If you analyze the comment sections of most red pill related videos, and using my own audience demographics as well, because you guys are also obsessed with red pill content, it appears the majority of people who consume red pill content are men between the age of 15 to 25. Taking it a step further, we can use the now quarantine subreddit r slash the red pill. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to find exact demographics of this subreddit specifically, but the data for the demographics of Reddit as a whole is available. Around 67 to 69% of all Reddit users are male, and around 64% of them are between the ages of 18 and 29. So I think it's safe to say that the people that consume the red pill content the most are men in their late teens and early 20s. And immediately, you can understand why these types of videos would be appealing to this audience. These are men with little to no dating experience trying to fulfill one of our most basic human desires. The desire to be attractive to women. And these videos usually offer an alternate perspective on the prototypical relationship dynamic. The first stage of getting into the red pill is it just completely shatters your previously conceived beliefs. The makers of these videos are usually in the mid to late 30s and explain to the viewer why the stereotypical Disney fantasy of one magically finding a soulmate and those two being meant for each other and only each other is total bullshit. So you start watching these videos and you feel like you're a part of this secret society that the outside world doesn't know about. Like you know the real truth behind reality. And that's another reason why I feel people love watching these videos so much is because there's a community, a closely knit following behind 
all of these people. You know, if I go to YouTube and check out the comments in a lot of these videos from a bunch of different creators, you'll see the same people commenting on all of them. And so it's this big following of people, mostly men, who all share the same beliefs, almost like a religion or cult. And there is a bit of a cult-like aspect to the red pill. I remember when I first started watching red pill videos, I did feel like I was part of a group of higher up men and that all of the things that these people were saying in these videos were right. Like we knew the truth. And on top of this cult-like community and following and the fact that it is satiating one of our most basic human desires, the content is also entertaining as f like, can anybody deny that? Some of these red pill dudes are hysterical with the stuff that they talk about. You know, sometimes they actually are joking, but sometimes they what they say is true. But it's still funny, the fact that they believe that. And then just the dynamic between, you know, men and women arguing about dating and how much modern dating has changed and how everybody wants to navigate that now and know how to navigate that and want to confirm their biases, which I'm going to talk about. It's such a popular topic right now and Red Pill offers an outlet to that topic. Especially in a world where we are more connected but less connected than ever and more people are in isolation and are lonely, the desire for content where both male and females are speaking to each other in person, or just a male is talking about dating in general. People wanna see that. They want to experience that in some way, not usually in person with a lot of these red pill people. They've gone on like one date their entire lives, but they still get that outlet. So before I continue talking about the things specifically that I do not like about the red pill, let's talk about some things that I do like about the red pill because there are a lot of things that I like and I feel as though Oh, I am still red pill in a way, but maybe just not so tightly knotted to the red pill. Once I started consuming red pill content after I got dumped and I started to see what was true about relationships and female nature and all this stuff and having game, it genuinely did teach me a lot about that. And now I do feel like I have more success with dating when I actually do try and put myself out there. There are principles from the red pill that I've taken and that have helped me flirt better, have helped me talk with women better. It just it really did help with my relationship game. Also, I believe that a lot of this community is not toxic and genuinely just wants to uplift men and help other men and expose them to some truths that they don't understand and teach them to be a better man for not only themselves, but for anybody they want to be in a relationship with. Red Pill has expanded out of just dating. It's about self-improvement as a whole as a man. There's a lot of content creators kind of still within that sphere. They kind of talk about dating, but they're mostly just focused around improving yourself and how that's going to help you eventually if you try to get into a relationship. Like it's just straight up facts. It makes sense that women would want a man who has a purpose outside of her, who is loving and protective, who is strong, who is confident with his emotions, who respects other people, and also, you know, teases her a little bit and has a fun side and, you know, doesn't take life too seriously. And a lot of the red pill does teach that. And it taught me that and it made me a better man for myself and for others. But like all things in life, too much of a good thing is indeed a bad thing. So let's talk about the worst side of the red pill, the things I don't like about it. The problem is when you overdose on the red pill. That's what I like to call it. So maybe you think you're just viewing the red pill right now for entertainment. Like, no, I just watch it because, you know, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch people argue back and forth about dating and relationships. But even if you're using this for entertainment, if it's making up the majority of your consumption of your input, then it's going to skew your worldview and you're going to develop confirmation biases around it and it's going to be the same skewing in a sense as those Disney movies. This is why I call it a bubble because once people get into the red pill bubble they have trouble getting out or accepting any other possible truths around dating relationships and women. The truth is I believe and you know I'm always still learning about dating, learning new things, experiencing new things. Things are not so black and white or more appropriately for this video not so red and blue. There are some fundamental principles that 
I believe pretty much every woman, at least 90 something percent of women like, but there are the outliers that, you know, you can be a lot of different things and you don't have to follow this archetype that the red pill says you have to follow. I know a lot of people will say to me, to what I'm about to say right now, that that's not the true red pill and that if you knew what the true red pill was, you wouldn't be saying that. But a lot of these dudes on the internet are saying that women love assholes. They love a guy who's a complete complete douchebag. They only like the big, strong, hurly guys who are like, oh, I'm always serious all the fucking time. I'm the fucking alpha male. So to only follow this archetype, which may be nothing like your authentic self, and you think that that's what you have to follow in order in order to get women, I just don't believe that at all. Also, if you overdose on the red pill, specifically the self-improvement side of the red pill, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but a lot of people go towards self-improvement or do it all the time based on a feeling of unsatisfaction within themselves. Like they don't feel like they're whole enough yet, so they have to improve. If your desire for self-improvement comes from a place of insufficient self-worth, you're doing it all wrong. You look up to this archetype of the perfect alpha male. You think, I am not there yet. If I am not there yet, then I am insufficient as a person. And so you're constantly working towards this ideal man, body, wealth, whatever, as if when you get there, then you'll be satisfied with yourself. That's really just masking trauma. And being so obsessed with self-improvement, red pill, all this shit can amplify that trauma and make you feel even worse about yourself because you're not whatever they say you have to be at. Another thing I don't like is that a lot of red pillars are amplifying the problems with modern dating and making things worse for dating actually because a lot of them say to not date anybody seriously until you're 25 or you've made a lot of money. Well then dudes aren't gonna wanna be in relationships like men going their own way and then there's the women that which is claimed to be in the red pill community that most of them find 80% of men unattractive and they're constantly getting attention and validation from social media sources and so they are looking for someone that is unrealistic based on their unattractiveness but I don't know I feel like if you're telling men not to date then that's just only contributing to this problem of people not dating and relationships no longer being taken seriously. Like that does not fix the problem. Not everybody wants to spin plates until they're 25 or 30 and they have established themselves in some way. And you don't have to do that. And consuming too much of this content on a daily basis, hearing these things repeated all the time about women aren't trustworthy. They've always got a backup dude. You gotta be sitting like this, talking like this, blah, 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 blah. It just makes you very paranoid, very anxious, and you'll never like fully trust a woman again if you continuously consume this content. Like if you've been watching these videos for a long time now, let's say a couple months, because I think I watched red pill videos continuously for like a couple months or so until I realized what it was doing to my mental health, then you've probably gained all the knowledge you need from this. And you should probably turn it off because now it is just skewing your worldview. It's turning things black and white for you. You're in a bubble, you're very close-minded, and you probably hate women or something like that. And I want you to examine the people in these comment sections and Reddit that are helping to confirm your biases. Who are these people? A lot of these people are young teenage males who have had like three interactions in their whole life with women and are trying to tell you or trying to agree with what's said in the video about how women are like this or that. You're taking advice from a dude who has no experience with women or you're using that comment to be like, he's right, he's right, he knows. But he doesn't know shit. And that is kind of the central resolution from this video. It's that things are not black and white. Human beings are very complex creatures and that a lot of these guys are naive. I'm naive. I still have a lot to learn. I've only been in two serious relationships. I'm still young. A lot of these guys telling you stuff are still young. So what I want you to do is go out into the real world. Go experience dating for yourself. More than just one or two rejections. More than just one or two getting broken up with. If you do it enough times and you get rejected over and over and over nonstop, only rejections, then yeah, you're probably doing something wrong, but don't just use one or two things 
as a way to say, oh, everything the red pill says is right then. Instead, challenge your biases that you've gotten from overconsuming this red pill content. Take what you believe to be truth and what you believe to be, oh, well, maybe this isn't always the case and continuously refine it over time. And that's kind of what I've done. And there's so much more to learn about dating and life experiences other than just videos on the internet said by dudes who have barely any dating experience themselves. Go outside, please. So if you've watched this video till the end, it's safe to say that you are into self-improvement. Let me share with you a website that helps you explore potential passions and deepen existing ones, which is the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. If you watch these types of videos, you've probably heard of Skillshare before, but if you haven't or you haven't taken action on it yet, it's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to choose from. They have classes on entrepreneurship if you're trying to start a business, classes on starting a YouTube channel and how to make it successful, different journaling tactics for self-growth, whatever you're trying to achieve or become better at, there is a class for you. A class that I have been taking recently is Introduction to Adobe After Effects, Getting Started with Motion Graphics by Evan Abrams. You guys know I'm always trying to level up the editing in these videos and a lot of what I've learned about After Effects specifically and motion graphics has come from Skillshare. And there's new premium classes launched each week so you'll always have something new to learn. So if you're trying to level up yourself, your life, or your income, then you can click the link in my description and the first 1,000 people to click that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Go take advantage of this offer. You literally have nothing to lose and this is one of my favorite platforms. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I am always trying to learn new things and stay open-minded about these things. I obviously do not have all the answers and thank you to all my patrons on Patreon this is a platform where I'm putting out exclusive content and you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the phone on there. The link is in the description to that. If you're interested in hearing me talk about modern dating in a video before, then you can check out this video. And I don't agree with some of the stuff I said back then, but it's a good video to watch. So go check it out. I'll see you guys when I see you guys.